After this, Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee, some call it Tiberias. A huge crowd followed him, attracted by the miracles they had seen him do among the sick. When he got to the other side, he climbed a hill and sat down, surrounded by his disciples. It was nearly time for the Feast of Passover, kept annually by the Jews. When Jesus looked out and saw that a large crowd had arrived, he said to Philip, Where can we buy bread to feed these people? He said this to stretch Philip's faith. He already knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, Two hundred silver pieces wouldn't be enough to buy bread for each person to get a piece. One of the disciples, it was, it was Andrew, brother to Simon Peter, said, There's a little boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but that's a drop in the bucket for a, a crowd like this. Jesus said, Make the people sit down. There was a nice carpet of green grass in this place. They sat down, about 5,000 of them. Then Jesus took the bread and, having given thanks, gave it to those who were seated. He did the same with the fish. All ate as much as they wanted. When the people had eaten their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the leftovers so nothing is wasted. They went to work and filled twelve large baskets with leftovers from the five barley loaves. The people realized that God was at work among them in what Jesus had done. They said, This is the prophet for sure, God's prophet, right here in Galilee. Jesus saw that in their enthusiasm, they were about to grab him and make him king, so he slipped off and went back up the mountain to be by himself. In the evening, his disciples went down to the sea and got in the boat and headed back across the water to Capernaum. It had grown quite dark, and Jesus had not yet returned. A huge wind blew up, churning the sea. They were, they were maybe three or four miles out when they saw Jesus walking on the sea, quite near the boat. They were scared senseless, but he reassured them, It's me. It's all right. Don't be afraid. So they took him on board. In no time they reached land, the exact spot they were headed to. The next day, the crowd that was left behind realized that there had been only one boat and that Jesus had not gotten into it with his disciples. They had seen them go off without him. But now boats from Tiberias had pulled up near where they had eaten the bread, blessed by the master. So when the crowd realized he was gone and wasn't coming back, they piled into the Tiberias boats and headed for Capernaum, looking for Jesus. When they found him back across the sea, they said, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, You've come looking for me, not because you saw God in my actions, but because I fed you, filled your stomachs, and for free. Don't waste your energy striving for perishable food like that. Work for the food that sticks with you, food that nourishes your lasting life, food the Son of Man provides. He and what he does are guaranteed by God the Father to last. To that they said, well, what do we do then to get in on God's works? Jesus said, sign on with the one that God has sent. That kind of a commitment gets you in on God's works. They waffled. Why don't you give us a clue about who you are, just, just a hint of what's going on? When we see what's up, then we'll commit ourselves. Show us what you can do. Now, Moses fed our ancestors with bread in the desert. It says so in the scriptures. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus responded, The real significance of that scripture is not that Moses gave you bread from heaven, but that my Father is right now offering you bread from heaven, the real bread. 
The bread of God came down out of heaven and is giving life to the world. They jumped at that. Master, give us this bread now and forever. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The person who aligns with me hungers no more and thirsts no more ever. I've told you this explicitly because even though you have seen me in action, you don't really believe me. Every person the Father gives me eventually comes running to me, and, and once that person is with me, I hold on and don't let go. I came down from heaven not to follow my own agenda, but to accomplish the will of the one who sent me. This, in a nutshell, is that will that everything handed over to me by the Father be completed, not a single detail missed. And at the wrap-up of time, I have everything and everyone put together upright and whole. This is what my Father wants, that anyone, anyone who sees the Son and trusts who He is and what He does and then aligns with Him will enter real life eternal life. My part is to put them on their feet, alive and whole, at the completion of time. At this, at this, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven, the Jews started arguing over him. Now, isn't this the son of Joseph? Don't we know his father? Don't we know his mother? How can he now say, I came down out of heaven and and expect anyone to believe him. Jesus said, Don't bicker among yourselves over me. You're not in charge here. The Father who sent me is in charge. He draws people to me. That's the only way you'll ever come. Only then do I do my work, putting people together, setting them on their feet, ready for the end. This is what the prophets meant when they wrote, And then... They will all be personally taught by God. Anyone who has spent any time at all listening to the Father, really listening and therefore learning, comes to me to be taught personally, to see it with his own eyes, hear it with his own ears, from me, since I have it firsthand from the Father. No one who has seen the Father except the one who is being alongside the Father. And you can see me. I'm telling you the most solemn and sober truth now. Whoever believes in me has real life, eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert and died. But now, here is the bread that truly comes down out of heaven. Anyone eating this bread will not die, ever. I am the bread, living bread, who came down out of heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live, and forever. The bread that I present to the world so that it can eat and live is myself, this flesh and blood self. At this, the Jews started fighting among themselves. How can this man serve up his flesh? For a meal. But Jesus didn't give an inch. Only insofar as you eat and drink flesh and blood, the flesh and blood of the Son of Man, do you have life within you. The one who brings a hearty appetite to this eating and drinking has eternal life and will be fit and ready for the final day. My flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. By eating my flesh and drinking my blood, you enter into me, and I into you. In the same way that the fully alive Father sent me here, and I live because of him, so the one who makes a meal of me lives because of me. This is the bread from heaven. Your ancestors ate bread and later died. Whoever eats this bread will live always. He said these things 
while teaching in the meeting place in Capernaum. Thank you.